Hello everyone, welcome to the Low Low Man Overview video. Low Low Man is my newest Beetleweight combat robot, and it's a bit of a progression from Long Long Man. Long Long Man was um, this robot I made eh, maybe about a year ago, and it was just, you know, a long bar of aluminum. What I wanted to do with Low Low Man was make basically the thinnest or the lowest possible beetle weight that I could. So in continuing with this theme, let's take a look at Low Low Man. So here is a closer look at Low Low Man. In terms of dimensions, it's about 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters, or about 10 inches by 10 inches. The chassis or the frame itself is made from a single billet of aluminum and it is 14 millimeters thick the wheels stick out about three millimeters top and bottom so from the floor to the top of a wheel it's about 20 millimeters so from the side you can maybe get a better idea of that so that's what it looks like from the side in terms of a profile. Um, it is extremely thin. In person, it just seems ridiculous. It's like a moving floor tile. And this is 12 wheel drive. So each one of these is an individual motor. There's no belts in here and I'll get to that later. As you probably saw in the previous videos that I had, this is using N20 motors, which are a really small um, 10 millimeter um, little brushed motor and it's using 12 of those, one for each one of these wheels. And um, up front here, we have two holes. These are the only visible holes from this side. The front one is the LED, and then that one is the power switch. This is a bit of a modular bot, and I'll go into that a bit later. Um, up front here, we have the kind of basher bar or the plow. Um, this is, I wanna say, how deep is this? Yeah, it's about 16 and a half millimeters, so about 0.6, so 5 eighths. It's about 5 eighths inch aluminum bar that sits in the front, and um, it is attached by this little um, keyway. There's a slot in the whole front that these different attachments can kind of um, affix to. And I'll show you when I show you the inside how all the different attachments, but there's three total attachments for them. Um, this is just the all metal attachments that is made for just taking some abuse. And if we flip this over, this is the bottom side. And you can see we've got some screws along here and there is just basically a cover plate that comes off and exposes all the guts inside. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it um, in terms of the outside. Um, I am still working to do some of the final finishing and such on this. I'm just going to um, sand this down a little bit more and give it more of kind of a brushed aluminum finish. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like from the outside. Let's go ahead and um, open this up and see what's on the inside. Opening up low, low man is pretty easy. There's just six screws across the bottom and just one simple little Phillips screwdriver. So just undo that. I tried something different with this design and you probably saw the preview of that in the motor cartridge and the battery cartridge video. I tried to make the inside of this as modular as possible. So to completely swap out this frame, I only have one, but if I had two of them to completely swap out this frame, it only takes this one screwdriver. Um, everything just kind of snaps right out. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Uh, but having such a thin robot kind of warranted a design like that. So this um, bottom cover just kind of comes off. And here is the inside. Now what's interesting is nothing is actually held in place by any kind of fastener. So that if we want to take out any of the motor cartridges, they literally just pop out. There's um, the little post or the key, I guess, that they um, fit into, and it just kind of sets down over top. It just kind of snaps in like that. So any of these cartridges we can very easily just replace um, just by simply unsoldering them, pulling it out, and then swapping in a brand new one. The other thing that you can see here is we have the magnets that are set inside the cartridge, and they are pretty powerful N52 magnets. 
Overall, with these six magnets, I'm getting about two and a half pounds worth of downforce. So for a three pound bot, that's not a whole lot, but it is enough to get a little bit of extra traction um, just for the pushing power. This thing does drive quite nicely. It's not the fastest in the world, but it is pretty powerful in terms of the drive because the um, weight distribution, you have a lot of surface area for wheels to make contact. And yeah, overall it drives pretty well. So um, you probably saw from the intro of this video that um, I had an NBOTS logo. This bot is kind of, um, I guess, sponsored in part with um, NBOTS. They actually created this custom ESC that dries everything. Because this is a 12 wheel and a 12 motor bot, I needed something kind of custom um, for the ESC because I would have had to do three double ESCs or something like that. So this is the custom NBOTS ESC that I will get into here in a second. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about before we kind of get into the um, front attachments and the ESC is this is the battery that you saw from the previous videos. So swapping out a battery is really just that easy. You just kind of unclip it and then you can just simply snap the new one in place there we go and so swapping the batteries is pretty easy in this as well as swapping out these now a couple little um things i don't have the final finishing touches i'm actually 3d printing a little cover that sits over this right here to kind of um, protect this and also cover some of the wiring and you can see i have these um little I don't even know what they're called, um, anchors for zip tie. So all this is gonna be nice and neat and zip tied in like that. So yeah, that's kind of what the inside looks like. So let's get a closer look at the NBOTS ESC because this is actually a pretty um, significant part of this build. So just pull this up like everything else, it just kind of rests on these four posts. And you can see I have um, this little um, 3D printed spacer. Something like this will go on the other side as well. This holds the LED. Oops, let me get on camera. This holds the LED and also creates a spacer so none of these components can come into contact with the aluminum chassis. Um, so yeah, and then I just have a couple bits of foam on here. And if I take off this piece of foam, um, you can see I even have my logo and the name down here. So this is basically the um, NBOTS DESC, which is their dual ESC. This is three of them in one board with an integrated power switch, which is um, really helpful for a bot like this where I need everything kind of as consolidated as possible. So power comes into here. Um, I've got all my radio connections over here, LED connector over there, and then this is their switch right there. So nice and simple, and all we have to do is put this little um, cover over top of it like that. And then this thing just slides down over top of these posts. And there's just a little bit of wiggle room here, um, just so it's not completely rigidly coupled. Um, but yeah, no fasteners, nothing like that. So everything is um, kind of quick change. So I think the next thing to do is let's um, completely take all of this stuff out and I'll give you a better look at what the actual uh, chassis or frame looks like. So here is the bare frame without anything in it. You can see I've got the um, two holes drilled through. Um, this piece of foam is actually glued in here just to give the battery a little bit of protection. You might be able to kind of see I have a little bit of painter's tape around this nub just because 3D printing isn't very precise and without the tape, this is just a little wobbly. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much all there is to it. You can see there's little divots um, here, 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 and here. Um, those are recesses or pockets for the magnets. The magnets on these little motor cartridges do protrude a little bit out in each direction. So that little bit of recess is there to allow them to get a little bit closer to the ground. And if I flip this thing around, you can see the um, holes for the front attachments all along here. I only have two in here because I knew I'd be doing this video and I knew I'd have to take this off. So they come through the frame or the chassis and then they go into this. I wanted to make these all blind holes so that, you know, you wouldn't see any exposed connectors because that's kind of the point of this bot. So um, let me kind of throw all this back together and I'll show you what the different attachments look like. 
So here's what Low Low Man looks like without any attachments on the front. As you can see, we've got the five holes across the front. And you can maybe kind of see the little, um, I guess, it's not really a dovetail, but it's just kind of a little channel that is uh, machined in the end. And so the attachments like um, this is that front beater attachment. It just kind of snaps on there like that and then the five holes or the um, five screws just hold it in place. Um, so let me grab the other two attachments and I'll show you what they look like. So here is attachment number two which is the wedge. Uh, this wedge is probably about 11 inches wide overall so it is quite long and it is articulating. Um, this is the 3D printed prototype. I'm printing the um, real one right now at 100%. This is made out of um, nylon G, which is the glass fiber reinforced nylon. It does sit very tight to the floor and you have these um, nice little wedges on the side that curve up and it has these two bolts that basically run almost the um, whole length. You know, they basically come into about here. So it isn't actually supported in the middle, but that shouldn't be much of an issue. And I just have these little wedge nubs that screw into that front side that allow um, this to be hinged. And just to give you an idea of how low this thing is overall, um, I've got psychotic brake here, just as an example. It goes right over top of everything. Now, if I go into the low configuration upside down, you can see that it hits about right there. So it will just barely go right over top of it. So yeah, it is still very, very low. And Psychotic Brake hits, you know, relatively low, but most bots will just go right over top of this wedge. So let's see the third attachment. And finally, we've got the wedgelet option. If you just absolutely need to get under your opponent, there are the wedgelets. These are um, 10 individually articulating wedges, and it consists of these three pieces. Basically got the um, wedge, and then you've got the um, actual little nub here. These are the same nubs that are used in the wedge. And then you have the other little wedge, and all these are 6061 aluminum, so these are all um, machined parts. Um, I did all of the wedgelets and the front bar on my Tormach, and I did everything else on the Avid CNC. So that was kind of interesting to see uh, the benefits between each one of these options. So yeah, that's what makes up um, the little wedgelets, and um, the tension or the looseness of these can definitely be adjusted with the nylon lock nut. Right now they're very loose, and it can drive off of them, which is good. Um, but they're 100% mirrored, so it doesn't matter which way they go, they will always fall down to the floor. So that gives me the ability to do the wedgelets, the front bar, and then I also have, of course, the big beefy wedge. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say for this video in terms of driving footage and stuff like that. Check back next week. I will have the fight recap for ARC airing then. Um, I am bringing this for me next weekend to ARC and that will be its first competition. So I will have the full fight recap and I will show you how it did in that. I am also bringing Psychotic Break as well. So I'll have a fight recap for that. As always, you can check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel, things like that. I will probably have some more videos on Lolo Man to show you how I made the chassis and everything like that. So be sure to check out that and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.